What's happening? <laughs> what is this? Alright, let's get going. Am I one player? Let's get down to business. To stop it. To defeat the hunts. Ethan Hunt. Mission Impossible. <laughs> <laughs> the next Mission Impossible looks pretty good. I liked two Mission Impossibles ago and didn't like the last Mission Impossible. I don't think I've seen any of them. Okay, welcome to Zalkyon Wait, is that the start? <laughs> Alright. Sure is. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait I'm wait. not playing. I'm also not playing. <laughs> that was okay. the demo. Now I'm playing. Uh, I'm also not playing. I think we we're oh, both no. player one. <laughs> yeah, that's strange. Okay. Let's <laughs> let's let's fix this and fix this and come back. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Controller settings. <laughs> Get you have to do it because I can't. Pair, I guess. Um, no, not pair. Um. Settings. No. Change, change order. order. <laughs> we should. We're Let not me do it. Set. Let me do it. Stop trying to seize control. Whoops. Press I A. I just I did press A. Is the thing. Um. I'm pressing A. Because if I press A, it presses B. See? <laughs> That's strange. Maybe I have to use a Wiimote as well. <laughs> okay. Um, there is a Wiimote up there that's gold, and it needs batteries. This is a really good episode. This feels right, though. If this is truly the end... <laughs> this is the end. Uh, where? It's, it's up there somewhere. To the left. It's on the top. Oh. And it, I think it, it needs sound like it. it doesn't sound like it needs batteries. <laughs> Wait. Can you hear the electricity? It needs to be paired though. <laughs> it doesn't need batteries. Okay, cool. Well, I'll 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 get in my zone to do math, which is of course just like storytelling, really good storytelling. So I'll I'll begin. Uh, you seem to be out of battery. I no, I have them on the counter right there. To your right. Uh, okay. To your bit. right. Uh, on the counter though. Go right. Uh, I really don't see anything. Go right. <laughs> it's on the edge. Stop knocking things over, you double whore. Uh, that's a that's a doing Dumbledore is oh, a whore. It's, it's a Dumble whore. <laughs> I'm a bit of a thought Harry. <laughs> what is this story we're doing? Hi, I'm Dumble whore. <laughs> I have no preference because I like everybody. I'm poly amorous. Also, I'm a polyvore. Ollie, not only anything, but everything. <laughs> I'm like that monster. It needs to be synced though, so. <laughs> Come on. I'm like that monster from Spirited Away. <laughs> but with dicks. <laughs> but also vaginas. So, that's the story of Dumblehore. Dumble whore, dumble. I think this would be in controller settings. Here, I got you. Dumble whore, dumble whore. Does whatever a dumble whore do. Slings a web to catch a thief, but that web comes out of his small penis. Oh, look out! <laughs> why did that it rhyme? Is a dumble whore. <laughs> also, why you're pairing Harry Potter properties with Marvel? I'm allowed. How? I've gotten the rights. <laughs> I don't think you have. I have the rights. Alright, am I? No, this is a demo again. <laughs> oh, G <BG> Willikers. <sighs> Go back to the title screen. Okay. I... Okay. <laughs> okay, are we finally playing? Are we? Ah! Yeah, I mean, we are. Alright. Exit out of that. How? Uh, two, I think. One. <laughs> okay. Alright. Seven, Math two. Time. Ah! <laughs> A long, long time ago, in a galaxy far away, Dumble Whore was here. He was here. He was unfortunately killed. Pretty tragic. Oh, I did it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the math boy now? His name is Nem. Damn it. <laughs> it took you a couple of years to... to... My name's Nem. How are you? I hope you're good. Just kidding, I don't. I'm Nem. <laughs> It's a, it, but I need a song is what I figured out. Song is the difference maker here. Difference maker? Yeah. Um. Uh. Um. <laughs> hey! <laughs> you took my number. That's right, I'll do it again too. Alright, now I have to deal with the thing though. Eight. 
Okay, oh. great. <laughs> I accidentally did it. I'm oh, bad at I math. I had an eight. I'm very bad at math. I'm Nash. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Hello, Dolly. Um. Uh, okay, I'm gonna do the long way. <laughs> <laughs> long multiplication, my favorite well, I was, subject. I was thinking just addition. Just addition. <laughs> it's a very long way. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, I thought you won. I thought I did too, because I'm that bad at math. I actually did not want plus, I actually wanted multiplication. Oh. Who's winning now? <laughs> well, I got eight again, which is exactly the number I had last time. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so I think our like early storytelling threw us off a bit. Alright, I'm gonna tell a new story. It all began with a man named Steven. And the thing about Steven is he had no legs, but he did have <laughs> extra arms where legs were supposed to be. Steven hated the water because he because of the arms he had instead of legs, and it made it hard for him to swim because he could sort of paddle, but he couldn't kick because they were like they were arms as well. <laughs> you need to keep playing while telling the story. <laughs> so he was he was kind of like, he, he used his arms as, as flippers, but it didn't give him much, like, mobility through the water. <laughs> okay. He could either have all mobility or no, or per, no propulsion. <laughs> <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> and so, Steven? Was his name Steven? Of course it was Steven. Something like that. Why would I even ask that? I'm the man. <laughs> I'm the man. <laughs> So Steven one day went to the mall and he said, Mrs. Mall, I need, I need legs. Can you do this for me? And she said, this is an Aeropostale. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, and? And so she went to the back and she got out the best leg she had in stock, the Aeropostale. All right. All right. <laughs> Get this, Charles Barkley's legs. <laughs> His actual legs? His actual or... legs. Oh, what was that? I don't know. He had sold them to Aeropostale three years ago to to, 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 <laughs> to get rid of gambling debts. He had many. Too many, some would say. But he would think, not enough. <laughs> <laughs> not enough legs? Not enough debt. Oh, <laughs> that makes more sense. So he went to... He went to... Uh, Vegas. <laughs> ah, Vegas. <laughs> and he said, ah, Vegas. Because he had landed truly in the spot of kings. Los Angeles. <laughs> Everything about this is strange. And so Charles Barkley went to the mall in Las Vegas, L A K Los Angeles, and said, Mr. Aeropostal, I require six dollars in change so I can play the slot machine. And they said, We're got, we're an Aeropostal. We we can't accomplish that request. <laughs> we accomplish that request? Accommodate, you mean? No, 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 no. Right, are we doing calculate B? No, nope, I guess we're going to do more regular math. I'm not Oh, playing. no, it's, that's a demo. It's a demo? Uh, I cannot exit it, though. <laughs> What's happening? Anyway, so Charles Barkley left the Aeropostal. Can you can we exit out of this, please? I don't know. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I guess we're starting. <laughs> he left the Aeropostal and went straight to the zoo. And know who he met at the zoo? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a tiger. And this tiger had marital problems. You like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> you might believe them if you also have had marital problems, but not as bad as he had them for sure. Cause he was in love with a human. And that human's name <laughs> was what? Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. This tiger loves Scarlett Johansson, but Scarlett Johansson wasn't in love with this tiger because she's a human being. <laughs> This episode is absolute chaos. <laughs> Strongly disagree. And so, uh, Charles Barkley went up to the tiger and said, Hey, it's me, Charles Barkley. What can I do for you, tiger, you handsome boy? And he said, I'm in love with Scottish Johansson. <laughs> What's his voice? <laughs> and what I need is her lo sweet, sweet loving. Can you accomplish this for me, Charles Barkley? And he said, I'll see what I can do. And so I went to Scarlett Johansson's house. And he said, Scar Joe, <laughs> I need you to fall in love with this tiger. And she said, okay. So she went to the zoo and she kissed that tiger square in his tiger penis. Ooh. And then and then the tiger is like, all right, I can help you out. Here's $6 and change like you wanted from the Aeropostale. <laughs> <laughs> These are really weird connections that we're going through right now. So he went back to the Aeropostale with the $6 and change. And he said, look familiar. <laughs> <laughs> And she said, not really. Do you want something from this store? And he said, give me your smelliest jeans. <laughs> smelliest, all right. Cover them with bad perfumes, if you would please. 
And she said, I, do you want to buy the perfume as well? And I can put it on it? Because otherwise I can't accomplish that request. <laughs> Why accomplish? And she said, look, I cannot, I mean, it, what you're asking for is more expensive than just $6 in change. Because as I will repeat, this is not a casino. And he said, all right, I'll give you my most prized possession, my legs. And so he handed her her legs. And she's like, excuse me? <laughs> this is a crime, I think, maybe. And he said, no, I checked. It is certainly not. I can legally give you my legs as legal tender. He said, okay. Because you put him in the back storeroom and Charles Barkley went on his merry way. Well, that's that same day Stevan walked in into that Aeropostal looking for legs. Why do you keep saying it that way? Like what? Aeropostal. That's pronounced. <laughs> I always thought it was like Aeropostal. You're wrong on this one, because I <laughs> guess who I am. Twist the story, Jane Aeropostal is my name. Ah. <laughs> and I was given this terrible power by my father, Stephen Aeropostal. That's right, the same man who went into Aeropostal looking for legs is the man who owned them. Surely you think he would know that they don't sell legs at this store, but he was correct. <laughs> they do. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when they started... Selling legs at Aeropostal. The moral of the story is, <laughs> just because you're handicapped doesn't mean you're lesser. <laughs> that, that's, that's the moral. <laughs> also, visit beautiful Los Angeles. <laughs> Los Angeles. <laughs> uh, it's this. It's the the town that uh, composer Vangelis created in 1986, but immediately went under because he didn't have the funds or the frankly the public service know how to get a city going so it sort of faded into obscurity it still exists you can visit it but it is lost for sure lost, oh, lost Vangelis. Vangelis. <laughs> okay that's different he is however dead so don't ask him for a ticket to ride <laughs> he was Fine. one of the Beatles <laughs> not a lot of people know that about uh, <laughs> Vangelis he was considered the 8th Beatle wow really mhm mm do you know who the other Beatles were? Sure. Okay, well, Paul I mean, McCartney. I mean, I know them, but... Roger Daltrey of The Who. He was the sixth Beatle. <laughs> He's of The Beatles or of The Who? He's of both. I'm at uh, seven. Let me I, add I, five. I, we'll be tied. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, uh, so, and then there's also... Um, Mickey? Rourke? Mouse. Oh, <laughs> both of those. Considered movies. the seventh Beatle. Uh, as I mentioned, Vangelis is, of course, the eighth Beatle. The ninth Beatle is actually George Harrison. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, the news the second and third? Uh, both of them are Ringo Starr. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the tenth Beatle is Walt Disney, actually. Mm. He got that position, Mickey Mouse got him the spot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not the other way around? <laughs> Walt Disney had sort of become a pariah in the music business after his failed <laughs> album... Uh, Disney, Radio Disney plays the hits. Okay. It was things like, oh, Mickey, you're so fun, you're so fun, you blow my penis. Hey, Mickey. <laughs> and it just didn't go over well with kids. It went over really well with kids, but it didn't go over well with their parents. <laughs> parents didn't appreciate it. I like to think that Walt the problem... himself asking children to suck Mickey Mouse's penis. <laughs> the problem there is, like, the cadence. Like, the syllables didn't match up. <laughs> That's mostly the issue, yes. <laughs> A lot of music teacher parents were upset. Uh... Just based on the scansion of it. So, um, but anyway, so Walt really wanted a spot, and Mickey made it happen, that, that old loon. Uh, <laughs> immediately, however, Walt sort of soured the position by releasing a new album of Disney hits that were versions of Beatles songs. <laughs> okay. He didn't have the rights, even though technically he was a member of the band. I had plus five, so I think that means I win. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you were starting off strong, but you've done awful the rest of the time. The 11th Beatle, you ask? Well, that's Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. All right, <laughs> uh, is that his third coming? Uh, I mean, I don't talk about his sexuality, so it's not my sort of place to ask. Um, I don't know how many times Jesus Christ has come. You have to ask Mary Magdalene that, I guess. What? <laughs> what? what? Why would you know? No, you know. <laughs> Where? They were close. <laughs> not that close, I don't she think. She was the 12th Beatle, so I'd know. <laughs> but that doesn't explain why she would know. Oh, I thought I had a nine. Oh, I do. I'm looking at your screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And then the 12th Beatle? That's Mary Magdalene. I just said that. Shut up. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> the power of Mary helped you right. win this math problem. 13th Beatle, you say? Well, that's Satan. <laughs> <laughs> how did things, he get in the Things band? got rocky for the band for a while. That's why they broke up. <laughs> that's, wait, how, how long ago were the Beatles playing? 
Uh, they broke up in 1980, I think? Hmm. 70, 78, maybe? It just goes to show you that uh, Satan can be anytime, anywhere. Can meet? <laughs> he can meet me anytime, anywhere. <laughs> I gave him a call, asked him to stop by, but he hasn't shown up yet. He actually didn't respond to my text. <laughs> Fourteenth feel you ask? Oh, no, no. <laughs> well, that's 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 John Lennon. <laughs> all right, I think we've gotten them all. Fifteenth feel? Well, that's 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 comedian Thomas Lennon. <laughs> all right. All relation. All relation. I have no Not relation. Not no relation. It's full relation. They're related in several ways. Hmm. <laughs> I don't like where this is going. A lot of inbreeding in the Lennon household. Let's just say that. Also, Vladimir, that's right, the 16th Beatle, Vladimir <laughs> Lenin. <laughs> Too many Lenins. He got in, it was mostly a, a family thing, you know, it was, a, it was a bit of a, what's the word, what's the word, what's the word, nepotism. what's the word, nepotism. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's how the 16th Beatle came to be. Huh. Yeah, you hate to see it, but that's how the business world works at the end of the day. <laughs> Speaking of the end of the day. I hit myself in the balls with this Wiimote pretty hard and it hurts a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a... And that's how I'm the worst part of going to bed. Is <laughs> all the coffee I drink before bed because I can't sleep. Folgers. <laughs> Is that our sponsor? Don't drink because at night...